Modern agriculture faces numerous challenges with diminishing resources. Scientists and farmers are always looking for innovative ways to boost yields, improve plant health, and ensure food security, or so we would hope. Now every once in a while we come across something that is so amazing Yet you are still somewhat skeptical because you can't fathom why farmers are not taking advantage of it. But instead, would choose to make less of a product using common chemical fertilizers and pesticides. So, there is an age-old concept that has captured the imagination of pioneers and visionaries who believe in the untapped power of electrical energy in agriculture. It's called electric farming. You see, the fundamental belief is that plants, like humans, have an intricate relationship with their environment. And by tapping into the realm of electrical energies, we can unlock nature's hidden potential. From small-scale operations to large farms, they are experimenting with electrification techniques to improve crop yields, optimize nutrient uptake, and enhance the overall health and vitality of their plants. So I want to explore the concepts and techniques behind electroculture farming for better understanding of how low-level electrical currents and specific electromagnetic frequencies can impact plant growth. Something we definitely all need in a time of assured desolation. Electroculture farming, also known as electroculture or electric farming, is an agricultural approach that involves the application of electrical energy or electromagnetic fields to enhance plant growth and crop yield. It is based on the concept that plants can benefit from the presence of certain electrical energies, frequencies, and or currents principles of electroculture farming date back to the early 20th century when scientists such as George Lakofsky and Anton Fiori explored the effects of electricity on plant growth. Who was George Lakofsky? George Lakofsky was a Russian-born scientist, philosopher, and inventor who wrote The Secret of Life. His theory was every living being radiates and emits EMF. He believed that life is the dynamic equilibrium of all cells and the harmony of multiple radiations, which react upon one another. He also believed that disease is the oscillatory disequilibrium of the cell, originating from external causes. It is more importantly the struggle between microbic radiation and cellular radiation. If microbic radiation is predominant, then disease is the result. And when vital resistance is overcome, death occurs. If cellular radiation becomes the ascendant, then restoration of health follows. Although that might seem like a bit to unpack, we can get into all of that another time. What's important to note is that electricity, electromagnetic frequencies, current, these things not only affect the growth and development of plants, but of humans and life itself. One way of electroculture farming involves the use of electromagnetic fields when 
applying low-level electrical currents to plants that can stimulate their growth and improve nutrient uptake. It is suggested that these electrical currents can enhance the plant's natural processes, such as photosynthesis and cellular metabolism, leading to increased productivity. This can be achieved through various methods, such as the use of specially designed electrical circuits, coils, or electromagnetic generators, which can increase crop yields, it can improve the nutrient content, enhance the resistance to pests and diseases, and accelerated germination and maturation processes. Additionally, it is suggested that electrification can improve water absorption and soil conditions. In mainstream agriculture, conventional techniques such as proper soil management, irrigation, fertilization, crop rotation, and pest control are all considered still the most reliable methods to ensure optimal plant growth and productivity. These methods have been extensively researched, of course, and proven over time, just as electroculture farming has, but it's just not applied in commercial agriculture as much as it should be. And there are reasons for that, and a lot of that has to do with corruption and money. Now here's something to go take a look at, electroculture gardening techniques for beginners. Elevate your garden. Now this article highlights the benefits of electroculture. It describes the process of creating electroculture antennas, addresses common questions about the practice, and explores the impact of different gardening tools on soil magnetism. Also, the article references the work of Justin Christofilo and Victor Schauber. Electroculture is described as an ancient practice that harnesses the Earth's atmospheric energy to increase yields in gardening. The energy harnessed through electroculture is referred to as chi, prana, life force, or ether. The benefits include, like I've said before, the elimination for the need of pesticides, manure, or fertilizers. By harnessing atmospheric energy, electroculture can combat frost and excessive heat, reduce irrigation requirements, minimize pest infestations, and enhance the magnetism and nutrient content of the soil. Now that is very important. There are instructions for making electroculture antennas using materials such as wood, copper, zinc, brass. It suggests using wood dowels or local pieces of wood as the antenna structure, with the height of the antenna influencing the growth of the plants. Wrapping the wood with copper and zinc wiring in a Fibonacci spiral or vortex pattern helps facilitate the flow of energy. The antennas are placed about six to eight inches into the soil, allowing them to interact with the surrounding environment. The electroculture antennas harvest the Earth's energy through vibrations and frequencies generated by elements like rain, wind, and temperature fluctuations. It suggests that copper coils, rather than pipes, yield better results and confirms that electroculture can be successfully applied to indoor plants using simple tools like chopsticks. The article also mentions the importance of positioning the antenna near the plants instead of directly wrapping the plants in the copper. And this idea goes along with the video I did on shape power and the power of the pyramid shape when it comes to this very idea. The article briefly touches upon the difference between copper, brass, bronze tools, and iron tools in terms of their impact on soil magnetism. It mentions the findings of Victor Schauberger, who observed that 
iron tools decreased soil magnetism, requiring more effort from farmers and potentially causing drought-like conditions. In contrast, copper, brass, bronze tools were found to maintain soil magnetism, resulting in high quality soil and reducing the workload. A lot comes down to frequencies and resonating energies. With all the electromagnetic radiation flooding our world, it is no wonder land is drying up along with crops and the birds and the bees can't do their job because the frequencies are all messed up. When someone uses electroculture farming, the bees come back. There's way too much information on this for us to still be using conventional methods of farming, struggling. But chemical fertilizers and pesticide companies are not trying to hear about a 70% reduction in the use of their products just because we want to eat and eat healthy. Look at China. China is making its vegetables grow bigger, faster and stronger using electricity. Last month, the Chinese Academy of Agriculture Sciences and other government research institutes released the findings of nearly three decades of study in areas with different climate, soil conditions and plantation habits. They are hailing the results as a breakthrough. The technique has boosted vegetable output by 20 to 30 percent. Pesticide use has decreased 70 to 100 percent and fertilizer consumption has dropped more than 20 percent. The vegetables grow under bare copper wires set about three meters, 10 feet above ground level and stretching end to end under the greenhouse roof. The wires are capable of generating rapid positive charges as high as 50,000 volts or more than 400 times the standard residential voltage in the U.S. The high frequency electricity kills bacteria and virus transmitting diseases in the air or soil. It also suppresses the surface tension of water on leaves, accelerating vaporization. Within the plants, the transport of naturally charged particles such as bicarbonate and calcium ions speed up and metabolic activities like carbon dioxide absorption and photosynthesis also increase. So this is good to spread the word about this. I know some of you have probably been working on your gardens already and it's probably a good opportunity to experiment with this because many people know that lately the amount of work has increased while the productivity of the plants has decreased thank god for natural solutions that's all for now folks and there is more to come please visit woodwardentertainment.com become a level one member for exclusive content Woodward TV is available to view on Rumble, and you can follow me on Instagram at J-A-E Woodward. Everyone have a great day. Go out, get your hands and feet in the dirt, get some sun, and as always, friends, stay awake, stay aware, stay safe, and I'll talk to you all soon.